Lovely to see you, my dear friend, David Doidge, the Chorus Master at WNO. Um, I missed you all of last year and it's so nice to see your face and to see how you're getting on and how you're getting through. Thank you for agreeing to do um, this lovely informal chat interview with me um, on how we in indeed got through a very difficult time, which was 2020. Um, let me start by asking you, how are you? Because I'm really well, thank you. How are you? Well? Yes, I'm good. Um, how did you get through it? Did you find uh, facing and embracing the changes of 2020 a difficult slog or were you pretty cool with the experience? Well, I think we all just, it was thrust upon us so quickly, wasn't it? And so therefore, I think we just, we all just had to get on with it. And I think that it it, it opened many new doors and opportunities in both positive and negative forms for all of us. And I think, um, you know, it was a bit of a baptism by fire. And I guess it, at, at first it was a bit of a novelty, I think. I think, uh, you know, the fact that something like this had never happened in our lifetime anyway, where, you know, we weren't able to sort of leave the house. And at first it was a bit exciting, but then eventually sort of the reality set in, didn't it? It yeah. wore off, definitely. So in, in, in terms of your profession, how did you adapt and um, quickly so to the changes that you needed to as chorus master? Well, so I, funnily enough, I, before I became chorus master, I was music staff at, the, at Welsh National Opera and I actually got the job uh, as chorus master literally just before lockdown happened. Oh, wow. And the thing is about that is obviously <laughs> it, it took a completely different turn to what I expected. And so therefore the job that I had in my mind as being chorus master and what that meant uh, in 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 those times um changed overnight and yeah. so i i had this massive you know i have such a duty of care to all the choristers and um and it was it was it was adapting to being able to do something artistically but in a remote setting um and learning what all those practices uh, are and you know I, I had to and, and the other thing is is that the part of that job that I was most nervous about before coming before lockdown happened was the sort of the, the the administrative and pastoral side of the job and actually that I'm sort of a whiz at now because I've spent the, the like the entire time on a computer and oh, yeah. so all of the thing that I was really most con not, not concerned but you know slightly anxious about because I've never really had to be I've never had my own office I've never had to sit at a desk and and write emails and things you know really not not particularly so so to have so to have done that I mean so that's been a really good thing I, you know um, to have adjusted to that. How many have you been looking after how many choristers how many people are you uh, taking care of? 36 so 36 okay. full-time members of, uh, of staff here yeah, in the chorus and and obviously the the great thing about this is the, imme the immediacy of being able to have a conversation with somebody you know is great but when you're trying to create music together yeah. in this in this way is very difficult and um we've been really lucky that we paired up with TCAD who are the in-house uh music um and sound engineers who who are you know at the Wales Millennium Center um and they've been producing the majority of our work and uh the process <clears throat> is massive for them because essentially what happens is a piece of music gets chosen and then say I or whoever agrees the, the tempo how it goes and a, and a tempo map is created which has a click track ass assigned to it which is like a metronome which basically gets faster and slower as the piece gets faster and slower and then that gets sent to every single person involved so every single individual chorister who then has to record their line uh, in time with this metronome and then send it in and then all of that gets mixed and edited and sent out and then they record their videos over the top and you know so it's That's it's incredible been a... so not just holding together the connectivity of a chorus and all these individual creatives and their characters and their personalities but then to record the technicalities of the voice be able to send it in I mean that's that takes an, an enormous amount of adapting doesn't it and I'm sure if you're anything there'll be people in your course a bit like me where technology is maybe not their strongest point and you've just got it like you said you've just got to get on with the job and have you had moments in that time where you thought oh, this is bigger than me I, I don't know how to cope with this have you just been able to sail through 
I haven't sailed through. I think that I've there have been times where I've been really overwhelmed by the amount of by the amount of work that a lot of the time I put I ended up putting on myself, you know, mm. because I I always like to see things through properly and I always try and go the extra mile and I don't cut corners when it comes to this because I just think that what's the point, you know, you, you have to kind of, you have to strive for the, for the best in, in, in any situation. Obviously I have a responsibility to those people, you know, they expect, they expect a lot from me, you know, um, and, and I owe it to them as well. And, and I think just like you said about the contribution of every single individual chorister and how different that's going to be for them. You know, if you imagine the, the chorus seldom, you know, they are always a unit so that so that group of people are, are seldom singing on their own. I mean, occasionally they do roles and covers and things like that, of course. But the 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 bulk of their work is singing side by side with someone else. You know that so they're creating a collective sound. So to have to so basically to contribute by just singing completely on your own at home, recording your line when probably some of them might not have even heard their own voices properly for quite some time because they've been in the mix of yeah you know yeah. of others so yeah very lots of adapting it's such a fascinating sort of insight into the, just the the overview of your role and your job but how this transfers and you know I think when we look to this pandemic I've got great friends in the hospitality industry great friends in the arts industry and my heart is mostly, you know, to, to think how impacted both of those industries have been under fire because of COVID, that when we get back in a room and it's all sort of lit up again without any risk, it's going to be such an exciting time. Uh, congratulations on the promotion. And, and that is, you know, it's, yeah, brilliant. So tell me then, when you think about, when you look forward to, or rather look back and to this year ahead, is there a mantra that's kept you going, kept pulling you through in these difficult times? Well, it's interesting you should say that because there's, there's, I, I mean, I'm, I love lots of different quotes and mantras and things that sort of enable one to sort of stop and think about a particular point of view or, you know, and, but I've been very lucky throughout this time because not long after I got this job, um, the the current uh, chorus manager went on maternity leave, and um, we appointed um, a wonderful uh, guy called Steve Phillips, who uh, joined me as interim uh, chorus manager. And he, for me, has been such a positive source of support and kind of in in this role, and just been my number two really, and just kind of been alongside me. And he. Um, he he is a big lover of RuPaul's Drag Race, and, oh, um, I, don't, and I, I don't think this this isn't a quote from RuPaul. But what Steve always says, which I love, is that four stilettos are better than two. And <laughs> I and I I love that because yeah, I, I love it's, not, that. it's not it's not particularly profound. Uh, but the thing is, is that it you can interpret that however you want in whatever situation you are in. Yeah. You know, if that's just basically kind of you know you sticking on your stilettos and being with the other person that's got them on just so that you can show solidarity or whatever or whether you want to stick someone on go and smack someone with them or whatever <laughs> if they're annoying you <laughs> you know it's it's any it can be interpreted it's very it's it's as I say it's not particularly profound but it's the one thing that has always made me smile and given me some sort of boost when I've really needed it and that's really helped so I think that that's I think that's quite a nice mantra to I love that. I've never heard that. Four stilettos are better than two, says the woman who can't even really wear them. I mean, I'm just not, I'm very bad at wearing stilettos. But I like the idea of this just constant swag and thinking, you know what, in these grey gloomy times, we've just got to jazz it up, dress it up and get out, get out Stick there. on a pair of heels. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. Um, so my final question to you, David Deutsch, is when it's all over, when this pandemic is done and we finally get our freedom with no avert risk to go out, what are you going to do first? I am like going to hug everybody that I have not been allowed or able to hug throughout this entire time, you know, and I think in some ways not seeing people is difficult, you know, having had time a long time away from people I like you and and you know I think there isn't there is a part of you that sort of thinks that 
because I haven't seen them, that I will see them. And when it's okay, you know, you will be able to hug them. But it's seeing people on a daily basis or on a regular basis that you that you can't go near, you know? It's almost worse in a way when they're actually in front of you, I feel, because it's like, it's instinctive, you know? And I, as I said, I think I saw somebody that posted something which said, you know, uh, I'm a hugger and when this is all over, I'm coming for you. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I really like that because that for me is just kind of, I mean, it's the most... Isn't it the most wonderful gift that we can give as humans, the, the ability to be able to interact uh, and yeah. touch and the sensory, you know, comfort that that brings people, you know, in a, in a moment, you know, when they need it. That's the beauty, I suppose, and the blessing of all that we've all had to go through is that, you know, the things that we took for granted and the things that were just our everyday, you know, givens, then got we got stripped off. So to be able to go back into that world and think, you know, there's no risk and it's safe, and um, you you start to really appreciate, I suppose, and reevaluate things. I know I have certainly. I've really wanted to strip things back and say, was that really important? You know, do I really need any of that in my life? And I think the, the whole sort of premise of this um, set of interviews we're doing around. I use the term mantra lightly. I know this, uh, the deeper sort of spiritual connection to that um, and maybe slightly overshadowed in these very informal conversations, but that little slogan, the little strap line, the, the personal phrase that, that gets you through. And um, I love what you've chosen. And I love what you said about the idea of just, just a simple hug. So no five-star holiday in you know the Maldives, just a single hug. <laughs> Well, that would be nice, wouldn't it? You know, but but I think the other thing is as well is that I, I think if I had to, my second to that would probably be the ability to go out and and have a good old boogie. That's the oh, thing I meant. Hundred percent. Being able to socialise with friends, having a few few cocktails, and then hit the dance floor and just and have that wonderful, you know, amazing energy around you of having people around you and and communicating through body language. You know, yeah. amazing. And I think for all artists out there and all creators out there, th- those things that we've, again, that we maybe took for granted, but we had readily available um, and they were taken from us or they were, maybe we had to adapt to our own sort of little bubbles to be able to just enjoy those freedoms. When it goes back to, um, you know, the collective, when we can come together, have a good party, have some fun. And I know dancing for me is my happy place, but it's, again, it's that idea of being in an atmosphere, having atmosphere back around you. And you only get that through people, you know, a lot of the time people. And um, well, listen, I've absolutely loved seeing you, loved our chat. I'm so proud of your promotion, well done. And I really all the best with the chorus and uh, with just getting through what feels like another four to six months this year, but who knows with the vaccine, we could be, we could be dancing soon. I hope so. I'll yeah. see you on the dance floor. Okay, lovely to see you. Dear darling, lots of love. Bye. Bye darling.